Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Bush. Welcome to the White House, and I salute the Vice President, Mrs. Quayle, and Secretary Cheney, other members of our cabinet, and General Vono, and distinguished members of Congress who are with us today, and uh, former Congressman Joe Diagardi. I'm especially glad uh, Joe's with us here today. To the former Medal of Honor re recipients, I salute each and every one of you. Uh, to Georgina Palmer and Mary Bowens, the sisters of today's honoree, are with us. And don't they look lovely? We're just delighted. And the honorees, some note of more than trivial passing. Uh, the honoree's great grandnephew. Uh, Staff Sergeant Douglas Warren of the 101st Airborne, he returned, uh, he looks a little jet lagged to me, but he returned just last night from Saudi Arabia. And uh, I want to welcome you home. And we also, so to do equal time to the Air Force, why uh, we salute you, Mr. Stowers, also back here. He's at Langley. So it's a lovely day here, and we welcome each and every one of you to the White House. Um, we want to honor a true hero, a man who makes us proud of our heritage as Americans, a man who, in life and death, uh, helped keep America free. I speak of Corporal Freddie Stowers, to whom, posthumously, we present our highest military award for valor, the Medal of Honor. It's an award for bravery and conscience that compendium uh, we call character. Today, Corporal Freddie Stowers becomes the first black soldier honored with a Medal of Honor from World War I. He sought and helped achieve the triumph of, a, of right over wrong. He showed, as this year has proved again, that an inspired human heart can surmount bayonets and barbed wire. 73 years ago, the corporal first was recommended for a Medal of Honor, but his award was not acted upon. In 1987, then Congressman Joe Diogardi and uh, my friend, the late Mickey Leland, known to many here from Houston, discovered the Stowers case while conducting other research. And the Army took up the case. And last November, the secretaries of the Army and Defense recommended that Corporal Stowers receive the Medal of Honor. I heard his story, accepted their recommendation enthusiastically. From the television studios of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., this is Ask Congress with Lester Wolf. Welcome once again to Ask Congress. I'm going to act as your surrogate and pose questions to two important members of the United States Congress. One a new member, uh, the other a more senior member who has, just because of his new position, become one of the most influential members here in the Congress of the United States. Congressman Mickey Leland of Texas and Congressman Joseph Diaguardi uh, of New York. You have just been elected as the, the chairman of the Black Caucus. Why do we need a Black Caucus? There are still certain concerns in the Congress that uh, we, we have that are very near and dear to people who, with great empathy for the problems of black people in this country. Uh, we have to guard those interests very carefully. One of the things you must realize, Lester, is that uh, you look at the numbers of members of Congress who are black today, and they're only 20. We have a net loss, as a matter of fact, of one. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 21 last year. This session, we only have 20 people. Something is wrong there. Uh, not necessarily the legislature or the, or the laws 
uh, embodied in the Congress uh, are the ones that are at fault, but rather what it is that uh, we have to do in order to affect change in this nation. We represent the cutting edge for black people around the country. While we don't purport to represent uh, all the interests of all black people, we at least raise the priority interests uh, of, of the black community. We also don't want to be known as just black representatives. We represent the entirety of this nation, but we also, re we also understand that the soul of this nation, if you will, uh, must be uh, brought to the forefront in order that uh, people will understand that we have certain plight that has, has been in the last few years ignored, and that is, is that uh, a lot of people have not yet realized uh, their American status. We are still second class citizens to a great extent. We are still uh, citizens who have been uh, forlorn uh, by the system itself. And we have to continue to fight to make sure that America becomes America to all of its people. We fight for the poor and the working people and, and we fight uh, with uh, a great fervor. Uh, but we continually have to raise the interest of black people in this country because we exist at the bottom rung of the ladder. We have not been given our just due, and that's why we have to meet in a caucus to determine what our agenda is, and then to fulfill that agenda, we have to amass uh, our intelligence uh, in a caucus in order that we can leverage the Congress to do what's right. Symbolically, we passed last year the, uh, the Martin Luther King birthday bill. It took years and years, but it had there not been a Congressional Black Caucus to fight that fight for so many years, we never would have convinced the majority members of Congress on both sides of the, the, the Capitol uh, to, to support an, an issue like that. Uh, there have been other issues, the Voting Rights Act, the extension of the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act. Black people have to be here, have to meet in a caucus to determine what their priorities are in order, and until of such time that, that we don't need affirmative action and equal employment opportunity, until we don't need uh, to, to, to fight for the poor when there they, they are no poor left in this country. I, I know that uh, uh, many of the members of, of Congress have worked with the Black Caucus. I've worked very closely with the Black Caucus over, closely. over the years. I want to thank you, uh, uh, Congressman Diaguati, for being here with us on Ask Congress today. Nice to be here with you. Let's look forward to being here again. We hope you will come back many times. And, and uh, Mickey Lewin, thank you very much for coming. You had a, 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 an additional perspective to this uh, program, having a Texan on with a New Yorker, you know. <laughs> I like it. I've enjoyed it. Thank you Good both. combination. Thank you both uh, very much again. Uh, and uh, uh, until next week at the same time, this is Lester Wolf saying so long from Washington.